The number one arbitrage in our world, it's called fame, right? Get real famous and the weirdest shit happens. People give you everything for free. Makes no sense, it's bad, you know, like, it's the number one arbitrage. So getting people to care about you for you and your journeys is important. What you do with that power and how you make money is even more important. Hey, Simon here. So we're in the IBIS, we're here for Expert Empires. This is where um, we have some pretty cool speakers. Uh, Ryan Dice, uh, Gary V is coming. I hear this guy called Siam is a bit of a ledge. Um, and uh, we have the, the Hoover lady. Uh, <laughs> we're launching a new business at the moment called The WAP. Um, hi. It's called the, the Wealth Action Plan. And The WAP, is, the WAP is a map that get, helps you get from where you are now to where you want to be. And in essence, if you've heard of Headspace, that meditation app, it's basically a financial education, business, online business setup version of Headspace. So every single day, um, you'll get like an audio or a video lesson, so a learning point, and then an implementable action every single day. Um, it could be tiny little implement, uh, impl uh, implements, um, or, or big ones, but basically it's going to be a year-long course and it will take you from wherever you are now to having your own part-time or even full-time online-based business. I, what I've done is I'm, I've just cannibalized everything I know and I've put it into uh, the WAP. And so you learn everything from how the world works, what money does, how money flows and how to really harness and capture it properly um, and to make it grow. Um, what, why you know banks and politicians will always be bastards and how to sort of mitigate that risk. Um, literally how the world economy works, but stuff that you won't learn in school or a uni, etc. And then it moves on to sort of financial mindset, your own personal mindset, and um, yeah, and, and then basically all everything you need to do step by step how to set up a, an online business. And it's it really is simple, and like you can set up a business within a day. It's easy. Um, so yeah, here we have some of the team. Um, I don't know where everyone else is. We have Vicky, we have Alex, we have Chris. Um, all just eating sweets. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, if you're watching this, thewap.org. Sign up. <laughs>
so, <clears throat> um, yeah, just done the speech. Um, 700 strong audience. Gary V is coming on the stage very soon. Um, it, was, it was really cool. Um, had some big issues tech-wise. There are three different times um, that my slides didn't work. I was stand, standing there like a lemon um, or lemming, just pressing next, and like all the slides stopped. But um, and the video didn't work at the end. <sighs> Bloody tech. Hey, I don't think people properly understand the number one rule of investing, um, which is what Warren Buffett said. Number one rule of investing is don't lose money. Rule two is see rule one. And if you, I forgot which book I read it from, but in Italy, there's a family called the Catalonia family, and they've been billionaires for um, over 31 generations, over 900 years. Like. They have a secret, and they've lasted two world wars, the Black Death, God knows how much stuff. And all they do is a third, a third, a third. So they put um, a third of their wealth in gold and silver, a third in land, a third in fine art, like museum quality art. And basically the trick is to buy stuff that lasts. It's simple as that. Um, stocks, bonds, all, this, all, all the other stuff which people think are assets um, are not really, they're not good for wealth preservation because they don't last. And it's quite painful because um, I've lost out on seven figures here. Um, I think I've lost out on about two million pounds worth of profit by being slightly too timid. In the speech I just did, I was, I was sharing that there are um, absolute bucket loads worth of um, techs which are about to hit the scene. Um, and it's like they're all at the same point where the internet was in the mi in mid 1990s. And back in the mid 90s, like, you can look at the internet and, and sort of see it or extrapolate its potential project, um, trajectory and see what the internet would have done for the world. And you would have seen back in the mid 90s that cool, internet looks good, it's going to connect the whole globe, the world's going to feel a lot smaller, uh, it's going to help business massively, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was that. But now we have all sorts of things on that racing line, just like a bunch of horses in a, in a horse race, all about to hit that exponential part of their exponential growth, as in that, that vertical bit. Things like AR and VR, uh, sorry, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, biotech, 5G is unreal, it's uh, and stupidly fast. There's so much stuff happening. And what we cannot see right now is that when all of these take off, we don't know what sort of cross-breeding hybrid sort of techs emerge from that. A mix of drones, Internet of Things and 3D printing, oh, God knows, but it, it's, it's phenomenal. Now is the best time ever in history to set up your own business, do freaking whatever you want, really. Here's the thing, why I've missed out on, I think, two million quid. Um, <clears throat> the, one of the biggest techs which is gonna change everyone's life, as in the next internet, is blockchain. If you haven't heard of it, Google it, uh, just learn a little bit about blockchain, but it's gonna change every person's life whether you're um, a shepherd in Mongolia to a Wall Street banker. Um, everything will change due to blockchain. The world of finances, I mean, banks are putting billions into blockchain because technically speaking, when we have cryptocurrencies with blockchain as its engine, which drives it, banks are redundant. You don't need a bank. They're piling billions in, in it to get ahead of that curve just to see how they can mitigate future risk. But the, yeah. <laughs> So everyone's heard of Bitcoin, right? Which is basically electronic money. Ether, so Ethereum, is the new Bitcoin. It's, it, it's the future of money. It really is. It's like a clever version of Bitcoin. It's programmable money. Um, I don't know how to, else to explain it, but it's the, it's the future of all finance. And the thing is, I've been watching this um, since it was around $10, $20 per Ether. And it hasn't been around for long, but all it's done is just gone like that. And like I watched it go from 10 to 20, like straight up. And I thought, right, okay, let's wait for a bit of a pullback. And it literally hasn't stopped. It's been relentless. Um, and then I painfully watched it go from 20 to 45, 50. And the thing is, I, the error I made was that I, I was looking at this like a trade. Um, which I shouldn't have because from a trading perspective, I did exactly the right thing. 
spot on. I was, I, I was waiting for the inevitable pullback with, I mean, whenever you have something which is overextended, um, just like a rubber band, it always, it's mean reversion. People like, things like to snap back to the, uh, the mean. And I was waiting for this pullback, but 10 to 20, 20 to 45, 50. It hovered there for a bit. I was like, all right, okay. So probably in a, I was waiting for a pullback down to 30, 35, and I would have loaded up. Trying to time markets like that is most of the time unwise to do. I should have pound cost averaged in. I should have been buying, uh, you know, I should have allocated my total chunk that I was willing to put into Ether and done it on a regular basis every week, every month, etc. and pound cost average it out that way. But what's happened recently, literally in the last week, it's gone from 50 to 80 to 90. And I checked this morning, 97, it's already hit 100. I'm like, mother, father, um, yeah, it's, it, it's annoying. And so from a trading perspective, I've, I've done the right thing, but the error I've made is from an investing point of view. So trading really is anything less than sort of a six month outlook. And this would have actually been an investment. Now, obviously it's not one of those things that last like the Catalonia family, but I, I see ether hitting a thousand dollars. I, I really do. I mean, Bitcoin did it. Um, and there's so many reasons why Ether will hit a thousand. Um, and I was too busy dicking about whether to get into 30 to 40 to 50. And now I've had to take a bit of a haircut. <laughs> and the trader in me is like, don't be a knob, Simon. Don't go in now like every retail person does and basically fl flocking to the masses. Um, so what I will be doing, I, I will be pound cost averaging in. I'm gonna be slowly dipping my toes in. Um, I do expect a bit of a retrace in Ether at some point, but I mean, with these cryptocurrencies, literally everything is like this. Uh, it's relentless. Um, but having said that, Bitcoin did have a big crash and yeah, so I'm waiting for the pullbacks and then I'll, I'll be loading up. Um, but yeah, top tip of the day, blockchain, know it. It's gonna change everyone's lives. Hey, uh, now, he's a legend. And, uh, so I'll tell you this, that Mr. Nick James has like, already worked this out for you, he's negotiated for you, so let's give Nick a hand, he's worked this out for you. Break out out. <laughs> and break him the same time, yeah. Yeah. to just do, you, he's doing it right now. Clap, There's nothing that trumps so, the actual... So here's the deal, take out your pins. Listen close. <laughs> Word. Right? right? <laughs> like, I, I just think he needs to. One or two times. Practice and Cross up at 299. It's not no. 299. This is for the e commerce. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, my name is Simon. I feel that the schooling system is letting a lot of kids down. Okay. And, uh, Me too. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and so, magic one time. First one. Time. <laughs> <laughs> So imagine one time, let's say you have like a blueprint, which is a perfect blueprint for, for the kids of the future. And by the way, real quick, I apologize. Fuck school if you're an entrepreneur. Like if you want to be a consultant at McKinsey, you better go to fucking school. This is back to self-awareness. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Like I didn't like the way that felt. I don't want anybody to think it's blind. If you know who you are, let me promise you something. The number 19 employee at Facebook made a lot more money than everybody in this room. Because she was self-aware and went to a good school that gave her a job at Facebook that made her $400 trillion. Whoa. Got it? So, keep going. So let's say you had the blueprint which enabled kids you know, to be relevant to the future, especially with tech taking off. But you definitely don't have that. No, no, not yet, no. No, no, not, never. Here's why. If you think you're gonna give a blueprint to a kid that is gonna allow them to be relevant in the future tech world, then you're disrespecting the speed of tech at a level that is even worse than the school. Agreed. Okay. But let's say you have a better schooling system, um, way better than what we have now. That's what the is the best way to get traction so that... By not selling parents that believe in the school system. Sorry, did you say that again? Please? Sure. By not trying to sell parents that actually believe in the school system. Got it. The biggest mistake that innovators... I've sold shit my whole life that nobody believes in. E-commerce. Then instead of going after French, Italian, and California wines, I attacked New Zealand, 
Australia, Portugal, my next big win. Then I believed in email instead of direct mail and newspaper when everybody else believed in the other way. Then I did Google AdWords instead of classifieds and the yellow pages. Then I did YouTube, blah, 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 blah. And the one consistent in my career is I don't spend a minute trying to convince anybody about anything. My level of giving a fuck, if you believe in what I'm saying up here, is zero. <laughs> the mistake when people innovate is you're trying to convince people this is better for Johnny instead of finding all the people that agree with us. You make the believers What's that? Go to the believers, believers then. Just don't even spend any time on anybody who has any value on the university. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's a really, what's fun about my answer there is that is the sales tip to every single person here. The amount of people that spend time trying to convince people, you're wasting time. These are binary decisions. Ladies, how quickly do you know if you're interested in the dude when you first meet him? You need it away. Those fucking suckers trying to trick you, they're not gonna win. This is a math game in sales. You need to go where there's opportunity instead of trying to force people to believe in your shit. And if you're good enough, then you become historically correct. I promise you one thing, my friends in here. There's a lot of people that were doing internet marketing in 2009 in this room when I hit the scene and started selling social media. And social media did not have black and white ROI in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10. And they didn't believe. I won. So like, that's why sales and believing what you have is so important. If you don't spend any time on trying to sell people that don't believe, and you're right and good at your product, you win twice. Because you make enough sales to get you to being in 2015 when it became obvious you were right and then everybody else comes. Got it? You go read my first book, it's called Crush It. I wrote that shit in 2008, it came out in 2009. Everything I wrote in that book fucking happened. That's just black and white.